that I would not have anything I wanted unless I got out of my own way. And this is my message to you, that you will not have anything you want unless you get out of your own way and unless you become your accountability weapon for yourself, unless you build this self-trust, you're not going to have anything you want because you won't be the person to help you get there. And if you're not the person to help you get there, who's going to? No one. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Alex Film Thoughts podcast with me, your host Alex. I'm very glad you are jumping into this episode today. We are talking all about how to become an accountability weapon. So I used to be entirely terrible at keeping myself accountable and I was lazy to a fault. I hated me like I hated making myself show up for anything. I would actively avoid putting like any effort whatsoever into anything in my life. I became someone who I didn't recognize. I was a literal shadow of myself and I didn't have any enthusiasm for life, like literally none. So I literally had no enthusiasm for my life, for any kind of energy, for anything. I really was like a literal shadow. And if I'd have stayed in that place, I never would have become the person I wanted to be with that mindset and that energy of like having zero accountability or motivation within myself. So I was on a path to nowhere. I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. I didn't have any motivation or goals or any kind of direction for what I actually wanted out of my life. And it kind of wasn't like I didn't want to get out of it. That's the thing. When you have zero accountability and you have no motivation to do anything, it's not like you want to stay in that place, at least for the most part. You might have areas where you're like, oh, I just can't be asked to do anything, whatever. But for the most part, you do want to get yourself out of this state because it's just not a fun state to be in. And I did want to get out of it. So I just didn't know how or what to do with that information. So I really didn't know how to become someone who could be accountable, who could be motivated in their life. And now I know better. And I know exactly what shifted me out of that state and on that path to the right track. So in today's episode, I'm going to share with you what caused that change in my mindset and how I sustain it now. So one of the first things is to choose yourself over everything. And I'm talking about your boundaries. I'm talking about your standards. I'm talking about your trust. These need to become your number one values for the next three months. Nothing is going to change unless you do. And you really have to start with action for building accountability rather than like waiting for it to show up to you, rather than saying pretty words, rather than journaling about how much accountability you want to have for yourself. You really need to show up with action first and build the skill of accountability because it's all good and well saying I'm going to be accountable I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I've got goals I've set out a plan I've put it in my diary how many times I'm going to do this that and the other but if you don't actually show up to each of those appointments to each of those promises to yourself and do the work that you need to do show up in the way that you need to show up you're not going to build the skill of accountability because you will keep flaking So it's absolutely perfect to plan it in. Like we've said this before, having a plan of action, having your goals very clear, knowing where you're going and making sure you have time in your schedule to do it is perfect as a first step of getting yourself clear on where you're going next. But from that, you need to actually show up. And part of that, I would say, is not making too many promises to yourself within having your boundaries and your standards and your trust being built and your number one non-negotiable values You need to not make them unachievable, unattainable. You don't need to make 35 new goals for yourself and try and complete them all because you will not build your accountability because you will fail. We need to set ourselves up in a way that we're going to have success with these first few rounds of accountability stretching and with your self-trust. So pick the really important ones. And part of this is bleeding into the next thing, which are your goals are important. Getting clear on what the overarching goal is and going hard on making that happen is going to be pivotal. So when we say the overarching goal, is the overarching goal that you have a finance pro job and you earn 100k a year? 
okay, that's the overarching goal. So in the next three to six months, what do you need to be doing? You need to be researching all of the skills you need to acquire in order to get you a job that's 50K. You need to be researching the kind of lifestyle that you're going to be living, the place you might need to be living in order to get that job, da, 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 right? So you need to then work towards the smaller goals in making that happen with the overarching goal of being a finance bro that makes 100K in your mind. So being really clear on your goal and why you need accountability and why you need motivation and why you need to be driving yourself towards this thing is going to help you to no end in actually showing up when it matters. So when your alarm goes off at 5am and you need to go to the gym because you're training for that ultra marathon that you're raising money for charity for, of course, when that 5am alarm goes off, you're going to want to snooze and go back to bed. However, the thought of that goal of raising 10k for charity by doing this hard work now, that's going to get you out of bed. That's going to help you keep accountable. So really being clear on what your goals are is so important to this. And then from that, building your trust, building your boundaries and your standards around showing up for that and doing the action of getting up at 5am when you need to go for that run. Pivotal, right? So accountability is really a habit. And this is one of the next parts. Accountability is a habit that you need to build and you need to keep going with it, even when it's hard, even when you want to say no, because it's going to be in those moments when it's challenging and it's hard and you don't want to do it that you build the most accountability and you build the most trust with yourself that even if you don't want to do it, even if it's really, really tough that day, you're going to show up and do it anyway, which shows you in the easy days, it's so much easier. If you need to, lean on your circle of friends, lean on your network and ask them to help you show up and keep you accountable. If that means that they need to check in with you on the Monday morning at 5 a.m. because they're also up complete, completing their training, they drop you a text and say, are you up? Are you in the gym? If that means dragging one of your friends to the gym as a gym buddy and saying, okay, you only need to show up for four weeks whilst I get in myself in the habit and then you can do what you like, but I need you right now. And they show up for you. If it's you are trying to get a GCSE and something and um, you need time to study, well, ask them to sit on the phone with you whilst you sit there and study and have an accountability partner that is watching you study. Whatever the goal is, if you can lean on your friends and family around you and your support network to help keep you accountable in showing up for that thing, it's going to be so useful because sometimes showing up for yourself is really hard. Showing up for your why can be really hard. So when you show up because other people are telling you that you need to, it's a bit easier because you're letting other people down if you don't show up. If you say, oh, can you put aside 15 minutes on your Monday morning to check in with me and you don't show up to that 15 minutes, but your friend does, how bad is that? You're not going to love that feeling of not showing up, even though your friend has for you. So you're going to be kept accountable in a way that you maybe wouldn't be able to keep yourself accountable in the first four weeks. And from that, what we're really saying overarching all of this is that your self-trust is everything. Building self-trust, building this knowing within yourself that you will show up as you need to exactly when you need to even when it's hard even when it's easy even when you don't want to you will show up because you trust yourself to that is going to be like the penultimate thing for your for your self-trust and also for your accountability you will be an accountability weapon if you put your self-trust above all This is coming into like your three values, your three non-negotiables of boundaries, standards, and trust. Your self-trust, you're knowing that I set my alarm at 5 a.m. I'm getting up for that alarm because I've put my faith and trust in myself. I will. Then you come into that 5 a.m. alarm and you do it. You're reinforcing your self-trust. When you say you're going to go out for dinner with your friends, but you're only going to have the one glass of wine because you know it makes you feel shit and you only have the one glass of wine, that is you reinforcing your self-trust. You're trusting in yourself that you can go and you can have the fun activity and you can have the socializing and you can have the one glass of wine, but you know you need to stop there because it makes you feel like shit the next day and you need to show up for your 5 a.m. alarm. Whatever these things are that you are promising yourself, the, tr- the kind of trust that you're trying to build with yourself, you say you're going to journal, you actually journal. You say you're going to go for that run you go for that run you say you're going to eat less carbs because they're making you feel tired in the afternoon perfect in all of these things when you actually show up you're building yourself trust to the point where you are 
inevitable in your determination. You are unshakable in your mindset. And this is really what the goal is, right? This is why you're here. This is why you're listening to me. You are trying to become unshakable in this mindset. You are trying to build a self-trust that is non-negotiable with everything you have standards for. You are trying to become an accountability weapon so that you can have the things you want, so that you can have the life you desire. This isn't for any reason for just fun and like frivolous play, like, oh yeah, sure, it'd be fun to be an accountability weapon. No, this is so that you can have the life that you want. And you're not getting the life that you want right now with your current circumstances. So you need to change something. And you know being an accountability weapon for yourself is going to change that. If you can't trust yourself to show up, who can you trust to show up? Who will be building that muscle for you of trust and safety? No one but you. So make sure when you're promising things to yourself, when you're making these commitments to be an accountability weapon, that you follow through with your actions, you reinforce that and you build this self-trust that is going to be unshakable if you continue on this path. There are just a couple more things I want to chat to you quickly, which is, who are you when there is no spotlight on you? When people aren't watching, when there is no posts happening on social media, when you aren't being kept accountable by someone else, who are you in that moment? And if you're the person that snoozes the alarm or picks up the bread and has the carbs, even though they're going to slump later anyway, or has that second and third glass of wine at the dinner, if you're that person right now, who do you want to be when no one is watching? Do you want to be the person that doesn't pick up that extra glass of wine, that puts down the carbs if they make them feel sluggish, who gets up for that 5 a.m. alarm? If you want to be that person, you need to have this thought in your mind of who am I going to be when no one is watching me? When no one's on my ass, when Alex isn't checking in, when I'm not being dragged to the gym by a PT, who am I when no one's watching? Because having that in your mind, when you are alone, when no one is there to keep you accountable, it's just that little reminder, it's that one sentence that helps you shift state from going, oh, I'll just snooze the alarm to actually, I need to be this person when no one's watching because this is driving me towards that dream. I want to be a finance bro hitting 100k living in the city. So I need to show up and prep for this interview today. It's just a really handy sentence that I use and that a lot of other people use to help keep themselves accountable in those moments when no one is there to pull up their socks and say, get on your way. If you are in this phase of life too, someone what two people that really 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 helped me get myself together are Layla and Alex Hormozy and I talk about them on this podcast a lot because they are so influential in my life and in my business they really are a guiding light for me in terms of business and structure and things like that so these are two people that really helped me get my shit together in terms of accountability so something Layla says is have your mood <laughs> follow the plan And that really resonates with me because so often we let our mood and our emotions dictate the plan, dictate the process, dictate how we behave. And actually our mood and our emotions are the most unreliable things in our life. You could feel the most intense anger ever and it is because you are hungry. That is a mood, that is an emotion, that is not, that is not a reality of your life, right? You can feel really disappointed or upset by a conversation that happened, but your perspective is completely unreliable. Your emotions and your mood around it is completely unreliable because what is fact and what your emotions are are two very different things. So when you F your mood and you follow your plan, you end up feeling better anyway. Have you ever had a time where like you've decided to skip work that day because you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling like you um, are underappreciated or whatever, whatever the thing is that you've decided to like skive off work that day. And then you sit there the whole day and you wonder how much work you actually need to be getting done. You feel guilty because you're gonna have to pick that all that slack up tomorrow. You're dreading the amount of emails that you haven't answered, da, 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 da. And you don't even enjoy the day off that you've created for yourself by pretending to be sick. This is that, this is you not following the plan and ending up feeling worse for it anyway. When we avoid the things that we say we're gonna do, when we break our self-trust, when we drop our standards, drop our boundaries, it all makes us feel worse in compounding effects. 
if you drop all of your standards, you drop all of your boundaries, you eat all the things you shouldn't do because they make you feel bad, you don't go to the gym and train because you can't be asked to get up for your 5am alarm, in compound effect, two months down the line, you are going to be unrecognisable to yourself. You're going to feel horrendous because you are not upheaping the habits and the standards and the evidence for yourself that you can do the things you want to do to be the person you want to be. So when you F your mood and you follow your plan, it will get you there to being the 100k finance bro, to being the content creator, to being the stay-at-home mom, to being the fashion designer, whatever it is. When you F your mood and you follow your plan, you will feel 100% better every single time, even if in the moment it doesn't feel very good. It's like when you go for that run and once it's done, you feel on top of the world. But every moment leading up to that, including the night before, knowing you have to lay your stuff out, get ready, stretch in the morning, you know you're going to have to do recovery after, every point of it you might dread. But once you get that run done, you feel elated. This is all of that in compound. So Alex and Layla made it blatantly and painfully clear to me that I would not have anything I wanted unless I got out of my own way. And this is my message to you, that you will not have anything you want unless you get out of your own way and unless you become your accountability weapon for yourself, unless you build this self-trust, you're not going to have anything you want because you won't be the person to help you get there. And if you're not the person to help you get there, who's going to? No one. So from all this, like, you might be asking, well, you say you're an accountability weapon, like, what's that actually done for you? I've done a lot, (laughs) essentially. I've been able to start a YouTube channel and sustain it and grow it. I've started a coaching business and I'm sustaining it and I'm growing it. I've landed jobs. I've hit PBs in the gym within a matter of weeks. I've saved thousands and thousands of pounds to go traveling because of my accountability with myself. And that was the goal. And it's non-negotiable. I won't spend over my budgets. I will keep this amount of money held and in safety so that I can go traveling. There are so many more things to this, but these are like the main ones that I'm like, okay, I need to share these with you because this accountability weapon shit has really, really impacted my life. It's impacted my goals and it's driven me forward in ways that other things haven't. It's really just made it possible for me to be capable to do all these things, to have the skills to do all of these things. And it's made it possible to achieve these things for myself. I know that this is what you needed to hear if you've decided to click on this episode. And if you need an accountability partner, if you need someone to show up for you in those first couple of weeks, drop me a DM and I will check in with you on whatever goal it is that you're trying to achieve. So this is going to be like a returning kindness for being a listener to the podcast. So don't worry about anything. Just drop me a DM with the words accountability partner or accountability weapon and we can get started working on your goal together. Otherwise, we can work closely together in one-to-one on building these skills and clarifying your larger-than-life goals. Every client I've ever worked with has left their container with more clarity and more action steps than ever before, and when they executed on those things, it is actually tear-worthy looking at their results. Like It makes me want to cry every time I think about it thinking about the results they've achieved from these goals and these action plans that we've created as a result of them. So I want that for you. And I know you want that for you. So head to the website. It's in the description or in the bio, whatever, and submit your one-to-one application essentially. So we can get working on those life goals and those life-changing results as early as September. But I love you. I hope you have a very wonderful day. Become an accountability weapon. It will change your life. Um, That is all from me. I will see you in the next episode of the Alex Beyond Thoughts podcast. Bye, guys.